go ahead and start. So good morning, everyone. I'd like to um, welcome all of you on behalf of the Columbus Karma Take Some Cholang Tibetan uh, Buddhist Meditation Center. My name is Kathy Wesley. I'm the resident teacher at KTC. Uh, today, we are welcoming Lama Losong uh, from the Gainesville uh, KTC in Gainesville, Florida. He's the uh, resident Lama of not just the Gainesville Center, but he also is the spiritual guide for the centers in Florida and elsewhere. So uh, he's, uh, he has a strong background uh, in uh, Eastern medicine as a doctor of acupuncture, and he has actually uh, had his own uh, class and his own college of acupuncture and school of acupuncture. And so uh, he uh, has great training in all of these areas. And we're excited to have him with us today to give uh, the program on the five energy healing modalities. So I'm going to take myself off camera and I'm going to take myself off audio in case you need me. I'll be here. Uh, but <laughs> I'd like to welcome Lama Losong, and ask you to please uh, turn the wheel of the healing Dharma for us. Thank you. Thank you, Lama La. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. And I thank all of you who are uh, with us today. Uh, some of you have been here um, for the duration and have heard uh, several of these um, uh, sessions on the various um, the so called uh, golden eight petaled lotus. And um, just as a, a reminder, um, we'll go over those briefly, but we'll begin uh, with uh, the refuge prayer, which is always important. I think all of you are um, have uh, taken refuge, and we want to turn our mind to the Dharma and to um, the supreme awakening of all sentient beings. So I will um, uh, chant in the Tibetan uh, the refuge prayer, and then once in English, and then once again in uh, Tibetan. And you can follow along. You may know this from the uh, Amitabha prayer that uh, you do. And then I will also do a short uh, prayer to my Lama. So, Namo, Kunchuk Sundang Sawasum, Chapne Namla Chapsuchi, Drogon Sanjay Lagochia, Changjuk Chokdu Semkedo. I go for refuge to the three jewels and the three roots, the sources of refuge. In order to establish all beings in Buddhahood, I generate a mind of supreme awakening. So again, welcome everyone. We'll continue. This is the last of the eight petals, um, but it may take uh, more than just this session to uh, complete it. So we'll see how far we go and uh, see if um, we can complete it today. But if not, in order to uh, give you the complete uh, teaching, we may need to extend it um, uh, to one more teaching. But to remind you, this golden eight um, petal lotus is the uh, teaching, uh, the way that uh, historically and traditionally uh, medical doctors, physicians were taught. And it begins uh, with the first petal, which is meditation, a self-cultivation. This was considered the most important. And before one could um, continue their studies, they had to show a certain level of competence uh, in their own mind. Uh, so meditation and self-cultivation, uh, those of you who have uh, been in Dharma for a period of time uh, know the importance of this. Everything is our mind. Everything is an expression of our mind. Everything is perceived as this uh, quality of our mental perception. And so we want to purify uh, this uh, mind. Nothing goes beyond that in samsara or nirvana. So that is the first and the second uh, aspect which we've talked about is uh, Qigong, Tai Chi, yoga, exercise to keep the body healthy. The third, uh, as we talked about, uh, is a diet and nutrition. You know, we get energy from different ways, from um, our ancestral energy, from our parents, from the food that we eat and the air that we breathe. Those are the 
the main uh, energetic um, that fuels our tank. The fourth is massage and twina or uh, acupressure or um, a variety of uh, massage techniques uh, to move the chi, to move the blood. This is also considered the fourth of the eight petals. Uh, the fifth uh, that we went over again is the I Ching and Mo. Also here is astrology and the different aspects of uh, the cosmos, cosmology. The sixth is uh, Feng Shui. This also uh, has to do with um, astrology and the, the cosmos and the lay of the land, both internal feng shui and external feng shui. And uh, the seventh, the last one we did was on herbal medicine. And we talked about certain herbal combinations, tinctures, teas, things like that that can be used uh, to enhance health and uh, well being. And the last uh, that we're going to talk about is the five elements. So uh, these are, this is the basis of um, all of the eight, uh, actually. Even, you know, we are considered uh, to be a composite of these uh, five elements. And everything in nature is also um, composed of these uh, five elements. So the staying healthy and happy is an ongoing uh, ever-changing process uh, throughout our lives. And we have all heard how important it is to eat right and exercise and good thoughts and get enough sleep and, uh, and stay hydrated and you know develop a social network, which is important. And to be in harmony with the uh, natural world, with the natural laws. But easier said than done, right? And so we're all trying to maintain that equilibrium, to maintain that homeostatic well-being. But, you know, really the good news is that uh, health and happiness may be easier uh, than we make it out to be. In fact, it's all about the way you think. And uh, so what we've been going through uh, are particular aspects of health and healing and identifying ways uh, to enhance our well-being with the things that I, I just mentioned. And it's my hope that uh, this has been a guide for you uh, to discover and practice the effective ways to nourish every aspect of your being and to better help you accomplish your personal and professional goals, whatever they may be. The skills um, that uh, we'll be discussing are the five elements are uh, wide in scope and have a, a many different um, uh, parts to them. And we're gonna be going through those. And these you know, are cultivated over our lifetime uh, to bring a new awareness, ever growing contentment and peace of mind that we all so desperately need. Uh, in these times in particular, it's been very difficult when we look at uh, the situation we find ourselves in with health, the virus, you know, um, the finances, the economy, um, you know, family issues and all of the things that uh, impose themselves on us. It's easy to lose our balance in this uh, situation. And I think probably most of us would agree that uh, peace of mind is what we most desperately seek and to how to maintain equilibrium in an ever-changing world like this. So old ideas and habitual patterns have created uh, you know, our current life situation and uh, keep us sometimes stuck in these old patterns. And as the saying goes, whether you think you can do something, uh, uh, you can. And uh, if you don't think you can do something, uh, you're also right, you won't be able to. It is a state of mind. And our happiness is also a state of mind, and we have a choice in how we uh, we do this. As Albert Einstein said, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. So for most of us, the problem is pretty simple. It's uh, either not knowing uh, what to do, uh, what to change, uh, or knowing how to do it. So hopefully, the things that we have been talking about give you some insight into ways that you can. Uh, uh, find that peace of mind through these different avenues that we've been discussing over these last months. We can't separate the body, mind, and emotions, and the spirit as they are all, you know, interwoven. 
in this tapestry of this of our human life. And the system of healing that we're talking about looks at uh, the human being holistically in this way. Uh, we are not a combination of separate parts acting independently from one another. Uh, we have to take the whole system into uh, consideration. So science tells us the thoughts we're thinking right now affects our entire being, you know, from hormones and neurotransmitters, from respiration to blood flow um, and cardiac efficiency, as well as creating the causes and conditions uh, for your next actions. So this classic Asian system of medicine and healing that we'll be talking about offers um, more than just physical well-being. Based on profound wisdom of our ancestors, it offers insights into both the natural world and our very own consciousness. So we'll be exploring uh, these things. And hopefully this um, knowledge uh, leads to greater awareness, vitality, and enhanced feelings of well-being and happiness. Like we said, what we're all really looking for, unfortunately, we're not real skilled in in taking the right action, in being skillful in um, our activities. Often we create more discomfort for ourselves and others. So we begin with mind training. That's the meditation part. So we can, you know, we begin always with the idea of uh, bodhicitta our mind training in the mind of enlightenment. Bodhicitta is the, the Sanskrit word as previously mentioned. We said bodhicitta is a heartfelt sense of uh, love and compassion and sincere intention uh, to benefit and the strong motivation to strive to attain true and lasting benefit, both for ourselves, the twofold benefit for ourselves and for all beings. And we do all have, all sentient beings, have the capacity to directly experience, you know, our innate wisdom and joy, our natural goodness, our Buddha nature. So with all of these things we've been talking about, really that is the bottom line, is to cultivate um, wisdom, prajna, and uh, to express that uh, in loving kindness and compassion to all suffering beings who want exactly the same thing we do. We wanna be happy, we don't wanna suffer. So, but we are unique in how we express this. It's worth contemplating for a moment that there's no one else like you. We have mentioned this, I think, before. You are one of a kind. There has never been anyone like you in the past. There'll be never one anyone like you um, in the future. You are unique in all the world based on a combination of causes and conditions. There's a vast array of circumstances that uh, have uh, um, culminated in uh, the being that is you. And by exploring meditation and the five element system uh, that we'll be talking about um, and the related uh, exercises such as Tai Chi and the rest, we begin to understand uh, some of the ingredients of the tried and true methods uh, that lead to greater happiness, greater health. So, um, Let's uh, begin these five elements as found in Asian uh, the healing uh, system are wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. We'll be going over in, into the great detail in these. And they're again, just not uh, the basis of an elegant system of medicine. This is the foundation of all of life, uh, both within our bodies and the stuff of our surrounding uh, universe. So through understanding these, uh, this five element system as a map, we can see how uh, it influences every aspect of our physical world. It provides a unifying vision, you know, that brings harmony and understanding to our relationships with nature, with ourselves, with others, and the forces that govern them and how we can uh, uh, come to understand them and use them in a positive way. So the understanding was developed, you know, thousands of years ago by the sages who directly experienced this wisdom and plumbed the depths of uh, this knowledge 
and it has become the most studied medical approach uh, on the planet. Uh, there have been more people treated with this system of medicine than any other um, uh, healing uh, on the planet and the science and philosophy of healing and the resulting practice of this approach uh, has a vast recorded history of study and documentation over thousands of years. So it has established a very rigorous system of medical observation and practical application. It always amuses me that um, Medicare, Medicaid doesn't um, accept the system of medicine because um, it's experimental, they say, after 5,000 years. So it is a, a matter of our understanding it and putting it to, to, uh, to, uh, to good use. So it's important to understand the underlying principles. And uh, you know, we explored this in uh, diet, herbal medicine. This is all um, the exercise, massage, meditation, uh, yoga, tai chi, all of these things have their, um, their base in the five elements. Um, because we are uh, a combination of the five elements. So uh, at the time of our birth, it was the uh, coming together of those five elements. At the time of our death, it'll be the dissolution of those five elements. Uh, and then the, the freedom of our mind stream that uh, is no longer bound by this physical form. It's very interesting that the more we find out, you know, in quantum uh, mechanics or uh, uh, theory, the disunderstanding also shows uh, the underlying uh, concept of what both the Buddha and modern uh, physicists call interdependence. Everything has uh, an interdependent relationship with other things. So in the West, uh, physicians are developing a strong interest in this system of medicine, as we have been talking about before. When we look at herbal medicine, many of our uh, current um, prescription drugs are based uh, on herbs and uh, the constituents found in uh, those uh, herbal formulas that have been refined and used. That is really the basis of our current system of medicine but there's a number of reasons we talked about in herbal medicine, why it isn't uh, uh, as widespread because of the money that uh, uh, goes into uh, creating a drug. There's um, a, you know, a monetary a consideration. But we have the uh, capacity to learn how to use uh, the natural world to uh, heal ourselves. In this view, uh, you know, our world and everything in it is composed of these uh, five interconnected elements or sometimes called the five phases because they are a, a, a dramatic uh, interplay, a dynamic interplay of, um, of these elements, just like the seasons are constantly in uh, change and flux. Uh, we go from uh, the, the fall you know, um, autumn, like we're in now, we see the changes, uh, the leaves fall off of the trees, the sap goes deep um, into the, um, the trees and uh, things become dormant, which is the essence of the winter time where everything is uh, hibernating in a certain degree. And uh, for us too, we tend to be uh, slow down. Uh, we may sleep more, it's darker. Um, that's a more yin time. We see the natural flux of light and darkness, of hot and cold. These are all aspects of uh, yin and yang that ultimately um, also uh, will be broken down into the five elements as well. So you are a unique body, mind, a spirit. And uh, in what is the best way to uh, maintain our health and homeostasis? So. We're going to be going into the uh, right now. All right, now I want you to know that we will definitely have time for questions. So if you do have questions, you can put them in the chat or um, 
uh, hold them for a, towards the end of this session before we close for the first part. Um, we'll usually take a little break um, uh, close to the end of the first hour, but we want to have a little time uh, for questions that may arise. So we often uh, think of our health uh, in terms of Western medicine, uh, we're accustomed to thinking of uh, more of a disease, you know, more of a sickness, more disease oriented than health oriented. We see the doctor when we're sick, uh, but there's not much in the way of prevention. So we go to see the doctor when we're sick. We don't uh, think about ways to maintain good health, unfortunately, and our doctor is not usually a very, uh, uh, helpful in how to avoid sickness, but um, we'll give you something to counter the negative um, effects when the body becomes uh, disbalanced in some way. But now it's uh, we need to uh, focus on prevention. You know, we're bombarded with information about how we should take care of ourselves and we can feel overwhelmed with how to do that. Um, how, what, you know, how should we begin? But we hear much about, um, uh, well, we should just say that the practice of medicine is both an art and, uh, um, and a science. And we, we try to uh, be our best self so that we can be a benefit to others. And it is auspicious to live a long life so that you can uh, cultivate uh, virtue and uh, tame your mind as it is, you know, the Buddhist teaching is to cultivate virtue, avoid wrongdoing and to tame our mind. And uh, sometimes uh, it takes a little while to actually have the direct experience of uh, taming our mind and uh, having the direct experience of the lucid clarity of our own mind, but that is really the most important thing that we can do is uh, to know our own mind more than anything. I just recently heard uh, Taisita Rinpoche talking about the, the purpose of life. And he said the purpose of life is uh, uh, to conquer ourselves. You know, we see historically um, people trying to um, uh, conquer other nations, the fights, wars, those kinds of things, but the real uh, basis of all of this is conquering our uh, ego and conquering those negative emotions that create such uh, hardship for ourselves and others. And again, you don't have to look far to see the ramifications of uh, an untamed mind. So by using this, um, we are able to really bring true and lasting happiness to ourselves. And we'll follow a certain uh, guidelines and understand again these uh, five elements. So let's begin with the wood element. Uh, could I have the, uh, uh, we have uh, some slides and there's a colored slide of the five elements. Uh, if we could uh, just show that. I don't have slides. I have one handout. Lama Kathy, can you share that with me? There should be a series of them. Yes, you bet. It's a it's a PDF, and the PDF has multiple pages. Yep. And uh, the uh, near the end Here, of the page. Let me put let me put it up, and I'll see if that's what he's referring to as the slide. Hang on, sorry. Okay. Oh yeah, I see what you're yeah, talking it's, about. it's a PDF. Um, that yes, that were made into yeah. uh, individual. Well, I'm calling slides. Yeah, it's like an individual page on the PDF. She's going to give us a screen share here. So what we're starting with is the wood element, which is uh, spring. Um, we're going to go to the next one. We're going to be coming back to that. Let's see if we can uh, scroll up. And um, there's the yin yang one. Good. There's the uh, meridians of the body. We'll come back to that. It's a little. And that's the one I was looking for right there. OK, sorry about that. No, that's fine. Good. <clears throat> so you get a, a little preview of the different uh, slides that we have and that we'll be using. But um, so this uh, wood element, which is associated with the springtime, is the uh, green circle that you see on the upper left side, the middle left. 
Um, and those, uh, if you can see that, um, that is associated with uh, two organ systems, the gallbladder and the liver, the organs of the gallbladder and liver. This is known as the wood element. And uh, it has to do with uh, a vision to be able to see, not only with our physical vision, um, our eyes, but with our, um, our spiritual eye as well, to be able to see down the road, to see what our needs are, to be uh, effective in planning and decision-making. We have to have vision to be able to plan. And uh, in order to do so, our liver and gallbladder need to be in, uh, in good health. This also um, uh, is associated with uh, ligaments and tendons, connective tissue. It gives us the capacity to, uh, uh, to move our limbs uh, gracefully. We know that um, you know, arthritis and uh, various other kinds of things that constrict we even, you know, we're, we're saying the wood element and the, the quintessential um, image of the wood element is a tree. And we, we talk about the limbs of a tree. We talk about the limbs of our body as well. And we can consider, you know, the limbs of our body need to be uh, um, uh, relaxed, at ease, able to move and um, without breaking or without uh, discomfort. So uh, the, what ties our limbs uh, together and our bones together are the ligaments and tendons and connective tissue. And this particular uh, element is uh, responsible for the good health of our, uh, our ligaments and tendons, our connective tissue. The emotion associated with this element when it's out of balance is anger. So we know just uh, how much um, this but anger in particular can destroy um, our good karma and create um, uh, negative uh, karmic consequences. And we'll be talking also about the virtues associated with each of these. So the virtue associated with um, this you know, wood element is patience, just like the antidote for anger is patience. Cultivating patience actually relaxes the, uh, the liver. So I'm just brief, briefly going over the correspondences and um, we will return uh, to them again in a bit. But uh, you, you'll get the overview of each of these uh, elements briefly. Uh, the sound of the voice uh, when one is uh, distressed or out of balance in this uh, wood element is shouting. And you may know somebody who uh, their voice is just naturally shouting. You wanna just say to them, oh, relax, I'm right here. You don't have to shout. But that is uh, an expression of an energetic predisposition. And the shouting is the sound, the sound of the voice. Each of these elements has a very specific uh, presentation in color, in sound, in motion. And um, the diagnosis uh, that uh, the doctor makes or that you can make as well by observing the, the person, um, you can tell which element is, um, is out of balance. Uh, uh, there's actually an odor as well, which is a rancid, and a person will have a certain odor uh, to them. I'm giving uh, you all of these uh, correspondences. And, um, you know, when I was um, uh, studying, we would uh, take time uh, to just smell. <laughs> so uh, uh, this is not the breath. This is um, a, a natural odor that is, um, we say rancid is like uh, new mown hay, or sometimes it's uh, like rancid oil um, that has a very particular smell for those who are trained in, uh, in, uh, in this aspect of diagnosis, which is odor, but there's a rancid smell. And we mentioned the sound is shouting and we're gonna do a healing meditation with a sound. And the sound is shh, as if you were saying to someone shh, that shh, actually has a relaxing effect. Everything is vibration. Everything has a natural uh, vibration, whether it's color, sound. Um, so we use that vibration uh, associated with the liver to calm it, to heal it. And the taste is sour. So a person who is naturally uh, attracted to a sour taste, or sometimes we go through uh, periods where we may be attracted to sweet, sour, salty, bitter, spicy. Uh, sour has a natural uh, uh, kind of tonifying effect uh, to the liver. 
and herbs that we use would be sour in taste if we were making a tea or a, 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 an extract or a tincture, it would have a slightly sour taste. And the first uh, aspect of healing begins actually with the taste. So when you put it in your mouth, the herb or the tea or the tincture, it will have that taste and that immediately begins to uh, affect the liver. And there's a time of day uh, for the liver. It is 1 to 3 a.m. And there may be some of you who find that you're awake uh, or you wake up between the hours of 1 and 3. You should, of course, be sleeping between the hours of 1 and 3. We, your eyes should be shut and you should be uh, able to uh, be sleeping from those hours. But sometimes when there's disturbance and the liver is uh, takes a a beating in our society from uh, toxins, whether in the air that we breathe or the, the food that we eat or the water that we drink or the, the anger that we experience, all uh, alcohol or drugs, all these things certainly affect the liver and uh, create a disbalance. So those are, are some of the correspondences associated with the wood element. And again, it is liver and gallbladder, which is a little sac that, uh, um, uh, is uh, just below the liver and um, holds bile. The liver secretes bile, which helps with the digestion of fats. So um, this is a quick overview of the uh, wood element. And there are natural, the, the wind is associated with this element. The color is green. For those people who are, so, who are attracted to green color or uh, don't like it, um, all those are pointing to uh, that uh, wood situation, liver and gallbladder. So when we have, when we eat, we should have uh, all the tastes available. Some people eat a very narrow diet, uh, eating the same thing all the time. It is best to have a wide variety of foods, uh, colors, tastes, etc. Uh, so, and uh, I mentioned that the uh, it is associated with the spring. This is new beginnings, you know, the springtime is when the new shoot comes up and even in our own life, it is, it has to do with uh, inspiration or, or uh, new beginnings in that way. This is like a birth, you know, this is the, the beginning of the energy as it arises from uh, the cold of winter, the little sprout becomes, uh, starts coming through the earth and making its way uh, towards the sun. This is springtime and new beginnings, new creativity. We consider this a, a stage of birth, new beginnings and fresh starts. So in our mind, it's like that. The seeds of fall have germinated and are pushing upward um, through the earth. So we can see this as a natural expression of energy. It's all a particular energetic vibration uh, through these seasons as well. And each of the seasons has a very particular energy to it, as you know. And this energy of spring awakens our spirit and our creative uh, inspiration uh, to move forward with our plans. We said it had to do with plans and decision-making. We usually think of uh, a spring beginning on March 21st. This is the spring equinox when the days and nights are equal and then the days begin uh, to get longer. So the image of a, a tree, you know, having its roots in the earth and its uh, branches uh, going towards the heavens is a, an is an obvious um, a kind of image that we use for this energy. And it also has to do with the eyes, the physical eyes. So um, uh, people who have eye problems or um, difficulty seeing, dryness, itchiness, those kinds of things are also associated with this particular element. All right.
So maybe we should talk a little bit about uh, the liver. Uh, it's amazing, not everyone is too familiar with uh, the organs. You know, we have these, uh, these organs in our body and uh, we don't know what they do. The liver is actually the largest organ of the body uh, with the exception of the skin. Um, it is a triangular um, shaped organ located in the upper right portion you know, of the abdomen. Um, under the diaphragm, diaphragm is the large uh, dome shaped muscle. And uh, it's protected by the ribs. It's in back of the ribs, the liver and gallbladder. It consists of four lobes. In adult, it weighs about three pounds and receives about uh, a quart and a half of blood every minute. It filters blood. It takes out the old uh, blood cells and uh, toxins and those kinds of things. That's why I say it, it really takes a beating. And there are many vital functions associated with the liver. It's like a big enzyme factory as well. And it's important uh, for our digestion. Um, it's uh, it secretes um, these uh, chemicals for the body and uh, digestive enzymes in the body and responsible for multiple functions and supports every other function. The body is seen in the system of medicine as a, a community or a kingdom. And each of the organs has a particular function, uh, which no other organ can do. And um, they work together uh, harmoniously to promote health and well being in the kingdom. And if one of the organs is distressed, then it, it causes a distress for all of the other members of the team. So uh, other uh, organs have to take on uh, extra functions. So when we uh, treat a person, there may be a particular um, uh, organ that is distressed, but we may actually see uh, other organs because of um, the situation with, for example, the liver having to work overtime and getting exhausted. So in this, uh, that's, we're gonna go through all of the organs like this, but if we see these five elements chart, the wood element feeds the fire, which is the red uh, the circle, that is the heart and small intestine. Uh, and the small intestine is the mother of the earth element, which is in yellow, the spleen and pancreas and the stomach. And the, uh, the next one, that white, is uh, the metal element, which is associated with the uh, uh, lungs and large intestine. And uh, that particular uh, element is considered the mother of the water, which is the, um, the kidney and urinary bladder. And then the, this is uh, the nourishing cycle. Each of these uh, functions uh, nourishes the other and controls the other in a very dynamic way. So the water feeds the, uh, the wood element. So if there's a problem with the kidneys, for example, and the liver is not getting what it needs from the mother in that way, then there's problems. And by the pulses and the other diagnostics, like we said, color, sound, emotion, we find what is the underlying problem. And when we treat it, the uh, body returns to its homeostatic, natural, happy state. And uh, that is the idea of preventing disease. You know, once there's symptoms, there's already uh, been a time of disbalance before the body begins to demonstrate this imbalance. So for uh, Western medicine, um, prevention is generally early detection, but there's already a mass or a situation that has occurred. The system of medicine really strives to prevent disease. Of course, this body is uh, uh, gonna be subject to problems inevitably. It does not go on forever, but we can keep it in a state of relative health by behaviors, by foods, and by the proper treatment. So this particular aspect of um, treatment is the last uh, when you're, you know, we talk about acupuncture or those kinds of treatments, they are down at the bottom of the list because they're like major surgery. Um, we really wanna do this by training our mind, by exercise, by diet, by nutrition, herbally, these other things that preceded it. But if it's gone so far that we really need a stronger intervention 
then we use um, acupuncture or other uh, treatment modalities uh, to augment uh, the body's own immune system and to create um, and to rebalance the body, mind, spirit when it has gone out of control. So we were taught, so that is the, the relationship of the uh, uh, nourishing cycle. The fire nourishes the earth, earth nourishes the uh, metal, metal water, water, uh, wood, and wood fire. Just like we see in nature, it is like that. So the, um, the function of the liver is uh, extremely important. Uh, it breaks down uh, fats, converts uh, glucose to glycogen. There's a number of things we can, we can say about that. Removes ammonia from the blood. It, uh, as I said, it's like a big enzyme factory, particularly uh, for the digestion of uh, really proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, but prim primarily fats. It also uh, produces uh, uh, proteins to help uh, clotting, you know, so the body uh, that's found in the blood plasma, it creates those um, proteins that so you don't bleed out when you get cut. Uh, and it, you know, detoxifies the body as well. It's amazing. <laughs> Each of these organs are truly amazing. The more you, you, you see what they do, um, the liver can actually uh, even regenerate itself. It's the only organ that can do that. Amazing. <laughs> okay, I, I, I think I may be boring some of you. I, I hear the yawns. So the um, gallbladder is the uh, small sac that is uh, the, the yang organ. So you'll hear of yin and yang organs. The yin organ is the, um, is the liver. It's a, uh, it's a solid organ. Uh, the gallbladder is a bladder. It is like a balloon and uh, as a small sac that stores and concentrates the bile and secretes that's uh, secreted by the liver and then secretes it into the uh, small intestine as needed for digestion. And that again is in the upper right hand uh, quadrant uh, behind the, the liver, behind the ribs. So uh, some of you may not want uh, anatomy and physiology uh, lesson here, but uh, just to understand um, this uh, official of, um, of the liver, the official of planning is um, very important uh, to all the functionings of the organs and uh, to you personally, so that um, uh, you can uh, carry out your plans that you can have plans to carry out. And uh, so the archetype of the wood element, you know, is, a, is a, a, a pioneer kind of person. You know, these individuals are creative, they're independent, they're self-reliant, they're energetic, they're dependable. You know, planning uh, comes easily to a balanced a wood type person. They're usually uh, have a lot of energy, they're aggressive, um, they can quickly anger, unfortunately. Uh, so they have to tame their mind in that way. They have lots of ideas and get things done. So you can kind of begin to see a prototype uh, individual here. Each of these particular elements has a particular uh, style of, uh, of functioning. They have lots of ideas, again, and get things done. Action is the name of the game for them. And their work is very important. Often they're workaholics. They just, um, they're entrepreneurs, they're creators. They have purpose and drive. So give me some feedback at this point. Um, we're about 10 minutes um, that we should probably begin some, uh, uh, you may have questions and to let me know if uh, this is uh, appealing to you. We can go through, uh, we can take it from this way so we know what the organs are and what they do and how they function both physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually and the, um, the virtue that goes with it. I mentioned patience and patience uh, to cultivate uh, for this particular uh, person is important. You know, this is the patience is the enlightened quality of uh, tolerance, of forbearance and acceptance. 
And this essence of patience is uh, the strength of mind and heart that enables um, us to face challenges and difficulties uh, of life without losing our composure and inner tranquility. We don't see much patience uh, exhibited these days, quite the contrary. So we embrace adversity, insult, uh, distress, the wrongs of others with patience, tolerance, free of resentment and irritation and uh, emotional reactivity. You know, that, uh, that is a choice uh, that we can make and we can cultivate uh, patience in our life. This is again, a very important aspect as we uh, traverse the path of the Bodhisattva. Without patience, so we cannot accomplish really anything. Uh, in practicing the perfection of patience, uh, we never give up on or abandon um, others. We help them cross over the, the sea of suffering and um, we maintain inner peace, calmness, and uh, equanimity. That is the essence of uh, patience and uh, the virtue or the, um, the perfection that is uh, needed to be cultivated and that actually helps our liver. Okay, um, we have some questions in the chat. Would someone like to uh, review those if we have uh, someone to go over those uh, questions in the chat or uh, are there questions you can uh, unmute yourself and ask the question directly if there's anything that you would like to, uh, any comments or questions? Okay. I, there is one question in there and I actually put that in there. So when someone has an organ removed, say like the gallbladder, how does that affect things? Uh, you, don't have, you don't have the organ, but you have the meridian and you saw a brief chart of meridians and you still have uh, this. Uh, um, so there are points on each of these meridians where we can influence the energy of the gallbladder, even though that receptacle is no longer there, it's no longer storing bile, there will be a, um, a problem with digestion of fats uh, in that situation. But sometimes the uh, gallbladder gets sluggish, there's stones, there's a variety of things, and it can degenerate to the point of needing to be removed. But it is uh, still, there are 44 points on that uh, gallbladder channel, and each of those points has an impact on the energy of the person. Um, so that, um, uh, it, it begins with the inner canthus of the, it runs all along the, the back and down the leg and exits a point, um, on the uh, second, uh, second toe, but it is, uh, if you can keep your gallbladder, that would be best, but, um, there are that is the most common abdominal surgery. They seem to take gallbladders out um, right and left, but there are a number of herbs and other kinds of things uh, to improve a sluggish gallbladder or even to remove stones. There are uh, herbs that break stones down and dissolve them. So ultimately that would be a better choice so that you can save the gallbladder and not remove it. Thank you. Yes. Okay, uh, any other questions? So there are, um, you know, uh, breathing exercises to help relax uh, the liver. There are healing foods uh, that are uh, for the liver. You know, our diet, as we were mentioning, is... Uh, so I don't know how far we're gonna be able to get, we're spending some time on the liver, but it is, uh, I'd like to spend some time on each of these organs so you have a better understanding of how to uh, keep them in balance. But the uh, diet is integral uh, to our health and there are certain foods and uh, uh, situations that help the liver. So food is our, our basic body's fuel and we want to eat what's um, in season and what grows locally. That's always good. This will naturally resonate with the energy of spring. So eating a clean, healthy, organic 
again, we want to reduce the amount of toxins, uh, poisons that uh, we put in our body. And unfortunately, there are a lot of um, insecticides, pesticides, fungicides, all kinds of things that uh, are sprayed in our foods, unfortunately. And the processed foods and those kinds of things, read labels. Uh, if you can't uh, read or pronounce uh, something that's in there, you probably don't want to eat it, eat real food. Um, as unprocessed as possible, you know, read labels. And if you can't pronounce it, as I say, you probably uh, don't want to eat it. It's that simple. And uh, we mentioned before, and we talked about diet, that, um, that green is the color of the wood element. Uh, so we're naturally attracted to uh, green vegetables in the season. Uh, for example, broccoli is loaded with vitamins, minerals, high fiber, lettuce, peas, celery, um, green beans, most leafy vegetables, you know, bok choy, chard, spinach, those asparagus, these are all uh, good choices uh, to enhance the liver. And as I mentioned, uh, the sour taste. So uh, putting a little lemon in your water is uh, very good for the liver. And if some of you, uh, as we mentioned, uh, are having problems with insomnia and you, uh, you're looking at the clock at uh, 1 to 3 a.m., um, you might want to uh, really take some of this uh, to heart. And not eating uh, late at night as well is uh, important. So the, uh, the saying of breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, and dinner like a pauper is still a good idea. And there are, you know, we talk about sour. So there's, there's fruits that are uh, also help balance the wood element, lime, uh, lemon, grapefruit, sour plum, pineapple, star fruit. There are a variety of things that um, are good for the liver. And uh, I also recommend uh, apple cider vinegar. You know, uh, just, you can put a little uh, bit in water and uh, like lemon, apple cider vinegar is also good. And um, the fermented things, are good because they are uh, probiotic. So kimchi, pickles, sauerkraut, miso, tempeh, olives, those kinds of things are also good for the flora and uh, for your digestion and the flourishing micro, uh, microbiome of your gut. You know, the microbiome uh, represents a hundred trillion or so residents. It's about six pounds of uh, uh, friendly bacteria in your body that support your immunity and numerous other physiological as well as mental functions. You know, we talk about the gut as the second brain. The researchers um, are beginning to realize how important our digestion is and this microbiome in relationship to our overall health and well being, including our mental function. So, but there are some foods also uh, to avoid, and those are the uh, uh, bad oils, you know, so the, the liver, as we were saying, and gallbladder metabolize oils. So um, you don't, you, olive oil uh, is good. And uh, the, uh, well, the oils you don't want are uh, corn oil, soy oil, canola oil, peanut oil, sunflower, cottonseed, and, you know, all hydrogenated oils uh, stay away from, they should be avoided, as well as heavy, oily, uh, fried, greasy, processed foods. If you want to save your gallbladder, uh, often that is the reason why the gallbladder goes into low performance uh, and becomes weakened is because of these uh, bad oils as well. So choose oils uh, such as coconut, MCT oil, which is a type of coconut oil. It's a medium chain triglyceride that comes from uh, coconut oil, olive oil, palm oil, avocado oils. Those are all good. And you know, there's a lot of controversy about um, cholesterol. Uh, it is not the cholesterol that um, is a problem for most people. It is the uh, uh, inflammation. And that inflammation um, is caused uh, primarily by sugars and carbohydrates. So the use of uh, uh, real grass-fed butter or ghee. Ghee is, uh, in Ayurvedic medicine, considered uh, uh, a medicine, basically. So. And if you can limit uh, your alcohol and uh, avoid sweeteners such as high fructose uh, corn syrup and uh, refined sugars, canned and processed food, potato chips, all those other kinds of things that use um, these uh, not so good oils, 
uh, carbonated soft drinks, and those things. Um, if you can avoid those, that is best. So we are again approaching the uh, time for a break. Uh, any other uh, questions? There's so much we can talk about. That's why I say I don't know that we're going to be able to finish what we want to do uh, today. But uh, let me, is, is this helpful? Do you want to know these things about uh, the elements? Um, if you could give me some feedback. I'd, I'd like to say that I'm really enjoying this and it's really opening my eyes. Um, with the aging process, I've been treated for a lot of separate conditions that all seem related to functions that you're mentioning, um, the liver impacts. And so um, this is really insightful and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that feedback. Two other people on chat have also said that it's very helpful. And I also am finding as a nurse, I am finding this whole conversation very fascinating. So thank you. Well, we might, before we close at this point and take a break, we might just want to mention one aspect, other of which is popular these days, which is aromatherapy. And it's a very easy kind of thing to use. So we've recently seen a new interest in essential oils and aromatherapy. As we have seen with the wood imbalance, there is a, a tendency for depression and frustration and anger. Uh, when the liver is distressed, we can have insomnia, dizziness, hypertension, agitation, and the oils that help to counter depression um, are basil, uh, bergamot, uh, clary sage, uh, geranium, lavender, melissa, neroli, lemon uh, verbena, uh, lang lang, these oils help with insomnia and restlessness and help to get a good night's sleep as well. Um, so some of these, uh, you can also use marjoram. Lavender is a particularly good one for so many ways and also as an antiviral. So they say that uh, when the plague um, happened, um, the, the people who worked in the lavender uh, factories did not get sick. Uh, so um, we can use uh, lavender, neroli, orange, chamomile, sandalwood, rose. There's a number of them that are also good uh, to help uh, relax the liver, uh, to help with sleep as well. And you can experiment which works uh, best for you. Using oils in a diffuser, for example, uh, is both enjoyable healing and it makes for a nice environment when you have a nice smell in your environment. We talked about feng shui. So uh, feng shui also includes, you know, the idea of uh, uh, being happy in your environment and these um, particular oils, you may find some that actually make you happy. And um, so the forest essential oils as well, we're talking about the wood element. So um, essential oils such as fir or pine or spruce and sandalwood. Sandalwood is a wonderful um, oil. Uh, can have a wonderful soothing and healing, calming effect on the liver. Um, there is another question before you take your break. Um, this question is from Julie Henderson. She says, I do have a question. Perhaps this would be better asked at the very end of the class today, but nonetheless, I will go ahead and, and ask, do you, for, do you offer further extensive training to individual students? She um, goes on to say that I am an RN and thank you for this offering. Uh, we can talk about that at the end. Um, I do training, you know, I, I trained a lot of acupuncturists. As uh, Lama said, I had a school here and I, I trained uh, uh, many licensed acupuncturists uh, in the school. So uh, I haven't done that for a while, um, you know, given COVID and the rest, but I've been asked uh, to do that. So I, I'm in the process of creating an online course, but it is, uh, this is part of it. You know, this is what I'm presenting to you is going to be uh, uh, the root of it. But each of these topics that we've taken is uh, a topic that requires more time, as you can see. So um, to answer your question, it's a work in progress. So I'm, I'm happy that um, uh, those of you who are listening um, find it uh, useful or helpful. So there's more to say about um, the liver and there are some herbal teas 
that um, we can talk about uh, from Mother Earth's, Mother Nature's uh, pharmacopoeia that people have been using, you know, uh, for the millennia um, uh, for nutrition and for medicine. Uh, one of the main ones that we use uh, for the liver is milk thistle. You know, it's been used for thousands of years to support liver health. And it's one of the most effective herbs for liver, liver cleansing, milk thistle. Um, it supports a healthy uh, levels of glutathione, which is uh, um, important for liver detox. So that is, uh, there's an active ingredient called silymarin that uh, is active in the milk thistle that is a key component and reduces oxidative stress and normalizes elevated liver enzymes. And uh, often people who have hypertension, it is either due um, uh, to the liver or the kidney. And um, now because of the stresses, um, whether it's toxic stresses, it's often liver, but um, the fear uh, and um, uh, stress, anxiety, affects the kidney, which we will get to. And uh, that can also uh, create hypertension or high blood pressure. And so we have to assess what is the organ system that's creating that problem and then treat it. Um, it is different than the uh, standard Western protocol where you go in and you get the uh, um, hypertensive uh, meds and it's a one size fits all and you just play with that one and see how it works and if it doesn't work we'll give you another one but we have to treat the underlying cause you know we always say that um, we have to treat the person and their situation and not the symptom it's uh, for example when the red light goes on they're saying that you have to uh, put oil in the car you don't cover up the, uh, the light, you know, you put the oil in, but uh, that's a kind of a Band-Aid approach, unfortunately, that uh, you just take a drug and um, to try to cover or suppress the symptoms. That is not the highest level of healing. We have to undo the underlying causes and conditions that produce that. Okay, uh, I guess we're, uh, let's take a break now. Um, Lama, how much time should we take? I'm thinking uh, perhaps uh, about five minutes would be good. It gives everybody time to get up and stretch and move around a little bit, and then they can come back and uh, rejoin the program in five minutes. Okay, thank you. See you in five minutes. Okay, but after my own health. This that's information, the idea. Yeah. Thank you so much for this information because it's been helpful to even, uh, even me just today listening trying to understand my own health conditions really been helpful, especially the blood pressure stuff. So yes. we, we like to welcome everyone back and uh, we'll go to the top of the hour. Uh, and uh, uh, so thanks very much. And Lama, please continue. All right, Lama, I wanna make sure we have enough time maybe for an update, you know, uh, for what you're doing as well. Oh yeah, uh, the update, um, here's what I'd like to do. If it's all right, uh, there will be an afternoon session today uh, I think it, it, we did plan on an afternoon session. Yes. Yes. Okay. So what we'll do is uh, uh, during the uh, during the break uh, of the afternoon session, I'll, I'll I'll share some pictures and things like that. So after people come back from their break this afternoon, because I think it's one to are we one to three this afternoon? I believe so. Yes. yes. Okay. That's great. I'm going to be uh, signing off uh, to go to go on my mission of mercy for the uh, with the KTD items uh, just a few minutes before uh, 12. So I'll miss the uh, conclusion of the morning session here, but I will be uh, in the afternoon session uh, and be here in time to share some updates because I have photos and fun things to share. So thanks. For yes. Asking. Yes. OK, good. OK, thank you. All right. Much. Yes, so uh, let's uh, see the, uh, um, the slides that we have or the uh, PDF. Um, I think that first one uh, that uh, was up, let's go back to the beginning again, if we can scroll up. Yes, can people see that okay? All right, so um, I'm going to go over the, um, you, yeah, that's good. 
So we, we went over the uh, wood element and we see liver and gallbladder there uh, associated with the sense organ, the eye, the tendons and ligaments and the emotion anger. And then uh, that second box there, the uh, wood element was associated with the uh, season, the spring and the uh, wind, the environmental factors. Wind is very penetrating and um, uh, Yes, we can, that's good. And germination, new beginnings, we were saying the color is green, the taste is sour, and the odor is rancid. Um, as we go across uh, from the wood element again, the voice is shouting. Uh, there are different grains associated, but they again are like tastes. Uh, so wheat has a somewhat sour taste. Leek is a somewhat sour taste as well. And the uh, plum and uh, the evil is uh, wind again, wind is very penetrating. So I will caution you, um, you know, not to sleep with a fan blowing on you at night. The wind penetrates uh, through the pores and uh, causes what's called wind cold invasion. And you may be covered at night. I mean, in Florida, we have uh, uh, ceiling fans, you know, cause it's, it's warm. And particularly when the pores are open, when, you're, when it's warm over the uh, period of night, uh, the wind, if you could feel it on you, uh, penetrates and you may be covered uh, with a sheet or a, uh, a blanket, but your head is not and people will have sinus problems, eye problems, even palsies and uh, uh, problems from this wind invasion. So uh, do not be in um, the direct line of a fan for an extended period of time. If you're walking, you know, um, wear a uh, shawl or a uh, something if it's windy and protect particularly the back of your head, which uh, there's a, a point at the top of the occiput called wind palace, which is particularly vulnerable to the uh, penetration of wind or wind cold. So that's why we say the evil is, um, is wind. Okay, so um, the next thing uh, we're going to look at is the fire element, which is associated with the heart primarily but um, it is also the small intestine. When we look at the heart time, it's uh, 11 a.m. Some of these uh, things are not all on there, but 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So it's high noon, you know, it's the peak of, um, of the sun. And this is sun time. It's not daylight savings time. It is the real time. You can't fool mother nature. So if you have to convert these times, it is uh, to uh, the natural sun time. And small intestine time uh, follows that from 1 to 3 p.m. That is the peak time. And there is a, uh, a low time. There's a diurnal cycle. Each of the organs has a two-hour block of time uh, that it's at its peak and a two hour block of time that it's at its low ebb. And uh, for the heart, it is uh, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and its low time is uh, 1 a.m. or uh, um, uh, 11 p.m. Uh, to 1 a.m., you know, midnight. And uh, for those of you who are nurses, if you've worked on cardiac uh, floors or intensive care units, uh, you may find that um, uh, heart problems uh, are worse uh, around this time at the low time in particular, but it can also be at the high time um, when the heart is uh, trying to uh, do what it can and is not capable or at its uh, low ebb and uh, is uh, exhausted. So that, that is the, the time for the heart. It's associated with the tongue. So when we do, there's a thing called tongue diagnosis. And when we look at the tongue, the tip of the tongue is associated with the heart. And if it is red or feels kind of sore, if you've had a, the tip of your tongue, it feels like you burnt it or it feels uh, sore or tender, but that is associated with the uh, heart energy. And of course it's associated with the cardiovascular system, which is the heart and blood vessels. So fire, heart, and small intestine, the tongue, the vessels. And we see the emotion joy. And we would think that, oh, joy, that is, why is it when we look at, at that, how come that is a, 
situation. It grants us the capacity for joy, but also uh, overexcitement uh, is stressful to the heart when we get overexcited. And that can be joy or it can be, you know, in a negative way as well, that overexcitement. So the odor, uh, or when we look at uh, that second box there, when we look at the fire, we see it's summer, the heat of the, uh, of the season. Um, and heat is the environmental factor. Growth and development, we started with the wood with germination and now we're growing um, and coming to uh, fruition. So in, in nature, you know, the summer is a time for uh, uh, the advancement of all of our cultural things. Uh, things are growing, the color is red, the taste is bitter, and the smell is scorched. So this scorched smell, uh, again, like we talked about the uh, rancid smell, it's a, a, a smell that um, exudes from the body. Uh, and it's, there's a, a variety of uh, scorched smells, but if you've ever been ironing, uh, not that you've burned whatever it is you're ironing, I don't know if I, people iron anymore, but uh, that smell uh, can be scorched, that it's, it's like that. Not that it's burnt, but it's going to smell like that. And in extreme sense, you know, if you burnt toast or you, you um, have that smell, it can be kind of acrid as well. Uh, the, the sound um, where we said it was um, the shouting with the, with the wood, it's laughter here. And this is inappropriate. Anytime we talk about the sound, it's the inappropriateness of the sound. So a person may be angry, you know, all the time, inappropriately, inappropriately so, that they just respond to things um, with that kind of um, frustration or anger. Here it's laughter, almost hebephrenia. They may be talking about uh, a dog that passed away and they're laughing about it or a situation that generally would not create laughter. It's a nervous kind of laughter. Uh, diagnosis can be hebephrenia. And the sound is ha, ha. This is, a, we, we said the sound for liver was shh. This one is ha. And if we don't have time this time, um, if we do, uh, we'll see how, how it goes. I would like to do uh, a meditation with the, the color and sound that we bring into the organ and the sound that's associated with it. It has a nice healing capacity. So let's see, where are we with the fire? Red, bitter, scorched, and uh, laughing uh, corn. It says is the, um, the grain, uh, leafy greens again. Usually this is associated you know, with a, a bitter taste and sometimes a bitter is, um, uh, the greens can be bitter. We sometimes, we talked about, uh, when we talked about herbal medicine, uh, bitters that help, uh, that are uh, used um, for digestion, but also enhance the, uh, like coffee. Uh, coffee is bitter in its, ac uh, in its action or in its uh, qualities, unless you put a boatload of sugar in it. Uh, and that, uh, as you know, can uh, some people get very anxious or their heart beats faster. It stimulates uh, the heart in that way. Apricot and the evil is excess. When, when we're looking at the evils, it's excess. So we know that people can get heat exhaustion and if they get too hot, it uh, can affect their, their system and particularly the heart. The heart is seen as the supreme controller of the body, mind, spirit. So we talked about the liver uh, official being the official of planning. This in our kingdom of body, mind, spirit. Here uh, in the fire element, the heart is seen as the emperor. It's the supreme controller. It's the monarch of our body, mind, spirit. And um, so we take extra precaution to uh, care for the heart, of course. And There is a, another um, a function. So when we were looking at the uh, diagram of those circles, there are actually four uh, things there. It was the heart and the small intestine, but there was also the, uh, okay, we're gonna take a little look at that. Thank you. 
So uh, here you see one uh, on the top one on the red, it's one, uh, that is the heart. Two is uh, the small intestine. Uh, five on the um, right next to the heart is uh, the pericardium or called heart protector. The heart, because of its importance, has a particular organ or function uh, that is assigned to, with it, which is the heart protector of pericardium. It's the sac that surrounds the heart and protects it from trauma and shock, injury, accident, and that is called the heart protector. And it is like the bodyguard for the heart. It is the only organ that has another organ in the system associated with it to protect it. It's considered that important. And um, in some systems of acupuncture, for example, they didn't treat the heart. It was just considered too sacred. But of course, now we do. And the uh, uh, six above the, the little circle above the five, these are all, uh, each of those circles within the colored circle is a meridian. Um, and each of those numbers uh, within that, uh, the star within the star, is um, the elemental points within. So and th this is maybe a little complicated, but um, we're not going to go into detail. But in treatment, uh, this each point is very specific uh, to that individual uh, and the diagnosis. So we select particular points uh, depending upon the energetic of that individual. But the other one, the, we have one, the heart, two, the small intestine, five, the heart protector. It's also called circulation sex. It's also called pericardium. Um, and six is the uh, temperature regulating uh, mechanism uh, called the three heater or triple warmer. And that maintains uh, proper temperature in the body. So you can see how that's related to fire. Uh, which has to do with uh, the temperature regulation and the body has to maintain its warmth and circulation. All these things are related. So you'll see four in the uh, red circle, the two and all the other ones. So the fire element is a little bit uh, different in that regard and that's why. All right, uh, we can go back to the other diagram. There we go, okay. And scroll up so we can see the bottom of that last uh, box. Okay, very good. And we were at laughing, corn, leafy green, and hot. Okay, um, so uh, red is the color, bitter is the taste, growth is the uh, development, uh, season is summer, Okay, we can exit out of that if you like. But if you have any questions about those things, uh, jot them down. So the fire element is uh, fully expressed as we were saying in the, uh, the summer season. And the archetype uh, for this, as we said, a tree is associated with a wood element. Here the sun uh, is the, uh, the, when we think of fire, uh, certainly in nature, the sun is uh, the thing that allows our, our, uh, our earth along with the other elements. Um, our plants need that, but in the body, it is the heart. And we, we talk about the solar plexus, which is that um, chakra associated with the fire element. We call it the solar plexus. Uh, so that's the best expression of the fire element. And from the new beginnings experience in spring, we now have entered into the full bloom of uh, summer. And summer usually begins uh, the longest day of the year, uh, June 21st is considered the summer solstice. And if you think about it, it is the season of growth and maturation, beautiful gardens and flowers and everything has come to maturation. Uh, fire provides the central light. We've all sat around campfires, you know, uh, in the beginning, uh, keeping campfire burning. Uh, and as human beings, we've gathered around the campfires for generations. And the idea of home and hearth is uh, nourishing to our, our emotions and love, which of course is an expression also of this fire element, our capacity to give and receive love that is essential to this fire element. And unfortunately, because of the situation we find ourselves in, with the social isolation or certainly social distancing, but being away from loved ones has really had an impact on our, our heart and uh, our emotions. 
and because the, the fire element is uh, so uh, keyed in and includes relationships, our relationships sometimes have, uh, and people have felt lonely and um, sometimes abandoned. So the fire is the quintessential symbol of love, affection, and compassion, and to reach out to those um, you know, who are alone is a, a great uh, compassion and compassion itself, you know, is an aspect of uh, fire. It's the most yang of the elements. Uh, so we say yin and yang. Uh, yin is uh, cold and wet and fire is hot and dry. And, uh, you know, it is uh, these paired opposites are in conjunction with each other, obviously. You can't have hot and dry forever. Uh, things would dry up, um, burn up. We have to have the rain. We have to have the dark uh, to balance that. So one is no better than the other. We have to have balance in our life. So between the yin and the yang elements. So summer is the hottest time of the year. It's the longest day of, uh, days of the year. It's also the brightest time. So that's when we talk about yin and yang, that is an expression of that. So it's the hot, bright quality of the, the season. And we mentioned the, the time of day coincides with that as well. It is uh, high noon, 11 a.m. to uh, 1 p.m. Touch is also associated with this. And we know how important uh, touch is really uh, a hug, an embrace, the, communicating our feelings. Uh, uh, summer tends to coincide with this notion as well. There's more uh, social events, whether we're touching each other physically or emotionally or mentally or spiritually or other ways, being social beings uh, who need, you know, love and to be loved uh, in our community of friends, family. I listened to TED Talks and I recently heard a TED Talk that said that, uh, you know, in long lived people, uh, I mean, well over a hundred, the thing uh, for longevity is not so much uh, diet, it's not so much sleep, it's not so much hydration, it's community that uh, people have, uh, that they, they feel a part of a community. It is that important. Uh, so we can't uh, neglect our sense of uh, community and our uh, connection to it. So our Sangha is uh, providing us uh, more than just um, a little bit of, uh, um, a spiritual relief. It's, it's giving us everything we need for a happy, healthy, long life. So the official of the heart, as I mentioned, is the supreme controller and is thought to be the emperor of uh, the king of our body, mind, spirit. And as I mentioned, sometimes in acupuncture, the physician did not treat the heart directly. It was considered a sacred it's just like, um, yeah, but of course in modern day America, we, we do need to treat the hearts. We, all of our organs are under duress. Our hearts are certainly taking a beating with the things that we see uh, acted out on the news every day. And if there's a disturbance of the beating of the heart, we're in trouble. And if the heart stops even for a few minutes, death is inevitable. And if you think about it, it's really pretty amazing. Uh, when we sleep, often our body gets to relax. The muscles can relax, the, everything goes into uh, the sleep mode, except for the heart. The heart continues um, uh, to beat uh, constantly. It doesn't get any rest. It never stops. If it stops, we're done. So unfortunately, nearly one in three deaths now, according to the American Heart Association, attributed to heart disease, stroke, or other cardiovascular problems. So we intuitively know the importance of the heart, and, uh, but we may not know how to protect it. If you've ever listened to your heartbeat uh, with a stethoscope, you know how captivating and magical that experience can be. And you know, a newborn is immediately placed on the mother's breast and uh, close to the heartbeat. It's relaxing and uh, that uh, the, the rhythmic sound of your heart beating is the source of life in your body and uh, is a very relaxing and mesmerizing sound. You know, when the newborn baby comes into the world, the child is placed on the mother's chest and the sound of the mother's beating heart can quiet, soothe and pacify a crying baby. Some of you know I had my own health issues. Um, 
emergency situations. But uh, I understand uh, very much the importance of this fist size organ and um, put it in perspective for me. The house, uh, the, the heart houses the shen, as it is said. And shen is a Chinese word that means both heart and mind. So um, it is, uh, it corresponds uh, to our spirit. It is uh, what puts the sparkle in our eyes. And we see, we can see the, the shen uh, in the eyes if they're dull and uh, the energy is um, uh, in the back, that shen is not expressing itself. Uh, we can say that there is a, a problem with the uh, heart spirit. But before going any further, you know, what's um, the amazing capacity of our heart, you know, we, we work the heart so hard, you know, again, we were mentioning that in strenuous activities, um, the heart is constantly uh, uh, working and the heart beats uh, on the average 60 to 90 uh, beats per minute. And uh, if you're on the athletic side, uh, you know, it, it uh, can be lower. My resting heartbeat is, uh, is lower than that, fortunately. Um, so, but for most of us, it's about 70 to 80 beats a minute. And that would be about uh, 4,800 beats an hour, one, um, 115,200 beats a day, 42 million, 48,000 a year, and uh, 3 billion, over 3 billion um, heartbeats if you live to be 80. And that's pretty amazing. As we were saying, it never stops, uh, hopefully, um, until the time that you are ready to leave this earth. So we have to appreciate the, the heart's great capacity for its job. And there is a, an exercise that we will do to thank our heart for the job that it does every day. Okay, so back to the, the fire type individual. Um, you know, we're coming into the Christmas season and uh, we could say that the perfect example of a fire type individual um, is the image of Santa Claus uh, wearing red and uh, flushed red cheeks and uh, usually a red nose as well and a ho, 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 laughing, a kind of uh, sound of the voice. He manifests excess joy and uh, not just everyday joy, but the, uh, the happiness of his bellowing, bellowing laughter, his ho, 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 that we always associate with that, of course, wearing red and uh, being maybe a little overweight and liking his milk and cookies that we put out for him. Uh, at this time of the year. So this is, uh, we can say, the prototype of the fire imbalance. Jolly, laughing, unfortunately, big belly as well. Um, and enjoying life, living large. So besides this uh, Santa analogy, there is another analogy that um, uh, we can use to demonstrate the relationship that our emotions can have on our behavior. Uh, stuttering is also, we, we said the tongue and the tongue is associated with our speech and uh, often a stuttering uh, situation is uh, the result of a fire imbalance. And there are many examples of this, but we can take an example from history um, uh, from a stutterer the person might exhibit, you know, this um, hyper excitement or, or mania. Sometimes uh, we'll see speech anomalies like um, being tongue tied, talking fast, or stuttering. And the, the example is um, if you've seen uh, the King's Speech, you know, that was back in 2010, the biographical drama about the British King um, 
uh, George VI, who dealt with stuttering when he spoke. In fact, our current president, uh, uh, President Biden, had a stuttering problem that he's worked hard to overcome. Um, uh, George had an issue with his stern father who showed no affection to him and it came out as stuttering when he was stressed. He was able to overcome this obstacle with perseverance and courage, but this had to do with his heart as well and uh, this overbearing father who had no love for him. And uh, this can manifest in a variety of ways. So this is an example of how it can manifest um, with this fire imbalance. And we mentioned the scorched smell. The odor of the smell is, uh, as I mentioned, like if you're ironing your clothes, you have that smell. And I've had patients, uh, you know, who exhibited a fire imbalance and it smelled like smoke, you know, that uh, there was something going on. But then uh, there's an example that when I was in training with my teacher, uh, uh, Dr. J.R. Worsley in England, I went to school in Oxford, England. And uh, we were doing clinical rounds and we had to diagnose a patient and uh, we all were coming up with the different things. So we had a resort to the master and he came in and um, took a look at the patient as they were, were leaving and uh, it gave them a hug as he often does. And at that same time, he uh, smelled the neck of the patient and that was his diagnosis basically. And he came back and said, that was a fire imbalance. He smelled the scorched. And um, so it is that clear for those who have developed their bodies as a diagnostic uh, tool. So to hear the sound of the voice, uh, to see the color uh, around the face, when we say that it's, it's, uh, the color is red, you can see red around the eyes, or around the lips, yet there's a, a, um, a manifestation of color. Uh, actually with the wooden balance, it's green and you can tell these colors. And for Dr. Worsley, all he needed to do was uh, to sniff the neck. And this odor is, uh, uh, was his diagnostic. He didn't need anything else. So as I mentioned, the, uh, the laughter is the sound, but it's the inappropriateness of the laughter. But we know that uh, laughter also heals. You know, they say laughter is the best medicine. So sometimes they, you're, they, you're told to uh, just watch funny, movies or um, there's even a laugh therapy i think in japan they they do this laughing thing and when you're around people laughing you can't help but laugh yourself it's contagious so uh, you can uh, you don't necessarily have to uh, do laugh therapy to improve your fire element but uh, you can watch a funny movie or tell jokes or do those kinds of things that elicit you know the humor in everyday life to see the humor in everyday life and as they say laughter is the best medicine There's lots of uh, images we use uh, when we talk about uh, the heart and the emotion of joy is, is the heart, the fire element. We have sayings like bursting with joy or jumping for joy or being heartbroken or half-hearted or hard-hearted. And uh, you can probably come up with some own words for yourself that express a particular um, uh, quality in a person if you hear that. Uh, lion-hearted. So our joy and happiness are related to our capacity to love and uh, to cultivate our love and compassion for others is uh, the best medicine for us. We also benefit from that quality of uh, loving kindness and compassion and uh, for many of us, as we, uh, as we look around, we need to learn how to love. And uh, this will be something that we'll explore in our, our journey to find true happiness. When all is said and done, you know, with, uh, when we come to the end of our lives, um, we will ask the question, did I cultivate a loving heart and express uh, that love freely to others? I think we all wanna say, yes, I did uh, do that, so our capacity to love and consciously cultivate loving kindness and compassion is the hallmark of being human. It's the highest uh, function uh, for the bodhisattva. It's the attitude that we have 
you know, it's what separates us really from other species. And we know that the worst thing that we can do uh, to someone is uh, to, next to the death sentence, is uh, to put people in solitary confinement, to remove them uh, from social interaction. That is a really cruel and unusual punishment. Solitary confinement is the ultimate punishment. And uh, we as social animals have a need for interaction and to engage in meaningful relationships and to have real intimacy. I mentioned that the heart protector is also called uh, circulation sex meridian. It's also the time um, um, the five to seven is the time for the heart protector, five to seven p.m. Um, so engaging in, um, in loving uh, relationships is important as well. So practicing loving kindness uh, towards uh, ourselves as well. Sometimes uh, we're very hard on ourselves. And if we look at that internal chatter that we have uh, and the, the way we address ourselves, uh, thinking that we're stupid or incompetent or why does this always happen to me kind of situation, um, we need to um, extend that compassion and loving kindness uh, to ourselves as well. The Dalai Lama says, uh, has a quote, and he says that uh, it is very important to generate um, a good attitude, a good heart, and uh, as much as possible. And uh, from this happiness in both the short term and the long term, uh, for both yourself and others will come. So that is the basis uh, for happiness, is our expression of uh, loving kindness. And it's not just for others, it's for ourselves as well. So we need to uh, watch that internal chatter that we have. So the functions of the heart, you know, the heart pumps oxygen and nutrients, um, hormones, and uh, brings lifeblood to all the organs and tissues of the body, oxygen, as well as removing the uh, metabolic wastes. But it's more than uh, just an efficient pump, uh, as you know. It's each of the elements has its corresponding yin and yang uh, association. Uh, the fire element, as I mentioned, has a, has a special um, aspect. The heart is the monarch, as we mentioned. And, but there's three other organ uh, systems, the heart protector and triple heater, as well as the small intestine. So we need to understand that. And uh, from this perspective, perspective the heart houses the shen. And I began uh, mentioning a little bit about the shen. It uh, means heart and mind. There is a shen or spirit for each of the organs, but mostly the shen is about uh, being uh, rather than doing. It's about being rather than doing. Uh, it's loving and caring. The shen is uh, the heart of fire. It's vitality. It's um, the heavenly light that we, we see, uh, you know, Looking into the spirit, we say, you know, by, you can look into one's eyes. And we were mentioning that uh, there's that light shining or is it dull? <coughs> Excuse me. And for us, you know, when we say, where is our mind? Often we, we point to our head, you know, but um, in, uh, in this system of medicine, uh, or an Asian uh, way of looking at things, uh, one would point to their heart. But it is both heart and mind. All right. Um, we're again approaching the... Uh, end of our second hour.
So Shen helps us uh, to blossom, you know, into the person we truly are. Without the fire, we're not able to enjoy the fruits of our labor, to have joy. We overwork or are burned out. You know, we use those words like burned out. Um, it causes exhaustion and the fire goes out. It's the feeling of being so tired and fatigued. There's no get up and go left. Uh, we need to stoke our fire. Uh, but unfortunately, that's often done with uh, alcohol, sometimes called fire water uh, or drugs. And um, in the uh, classics, it says the heart is the sovereign of all the organs and represents the consciousness of one's being. It is responsible for intelligence, wisdom and spiritual transformations. So often we see the expression um, of people being uh, falling between the two extremes of a blazing fire or the lack of it. Uh, feelings of being cold, numb, distant, uh, disconnected or aloof. Um, these can be the result of hurt or traumatized you know, at an early age. And sometimes it is painful to experience what life presents uh, to us. And we commonly hear post-traumatic uh, stress disorders, PTSD, and the fire element is always affected by this. We can become overly excited or numb, you know, to these experiences and become unfeeling. We just cut ourselves off from our own uh, feelings. We don't want to feel, we don't want to feel pain, but it results in not wanting to feel. We cut ourselves off from feeling. So that can be a, a short-term strategy, but not a long-term uh, um, way of dealing with uh, previous misfortunes. We miss the experience of uh, feeling our connection with family and friends and the joy that this can bring. So this is all in the realm of the fire element. And we mentioned, um, you know, the, the being vulnerable is human. Um, and we mentioned the pericardium protecting the heart. And if our pericardium is working properly, uh, we can be fearless in our love for others. And you know, there, there are patients uh, of mine who frequently say they feel burnt out uh, from the stresses they are dealing with and ask uh, what can be done uh, to manage the stress. And one of the best remedies is gratitude. You know, science is now in agreement that counting our blessings is a very skillful practice uh, to enhance happiness in one's life and is essential to our overall health and well being. So, the practice of gratitude. And now we're coming up on Thanksgiving. We have so much to be thankful for. Um, we could definitely uh, jot down all those things that we are so grateful for. Often we turn our attention to those things that uh, uh, create anxiety for ourselves and, uh, and just uh, uh, continually go over those things. But uh, those things that uh, we are so uh, grateful for and are so fortunate uh, to have in our life. Uh, we need to uh, consider. And this, we should have Thanksgiving every day, but uh, now that we're approaching that, uh, we can really um, take time uh, to be great, grateful. All right, so we, that's uh, about our heart. Small intestine uh, function is the, uh, the official, you know, we're saying that all of these uh, organs are like officials in our kingdom of our body, mind, spirit. Uh, this is the official of uh, sorting out, uh, sorting out the pure from the impure. And that's what the small intestine does at the physical level, the mental level, the emotional level, the spiritual level. Um, it takes um, you know, what it uh, is from the stomach, rots and ripens, and then it goes into the small intestine to extract 
uh, the good stuff and the rest goes off to the large intestine to be eliminated. So the small intestine really is in charge of sorting out the pure from the impure, what we need from what we don't need. But that is across the board, not only uh, with the food that we eat, but the thoughts that we think and the people we interact with and everything else. So we're constantly sorting uh, friend and foe, um, what we need from what we don't need. And um, the, so this, uh, this um, small intestine actually is divided into to three sections. If we look at the physical uh, aspect of the small intestine, the vadnam, uh, the jejunum, and the ileum, these are um, the sections responsible for specific aspects of digestion. And it is an organ that supports the digestive process, you know, with the chemical breakdown of proteins, fats, carbohydrates, and is involved <clears throat> with the assimilation of the nutrients and the eliminations of uh, metabolic waste, as we said, that goes off to the large intestine. So the, um, just as a little bit of uh, information about the small intestine, um, it can vary greatly uh, from about nine feet to as long as 34 feet, uh, depending on the, um, the size of the person. It's about an inch in diameter in adults, and uh, these are sus suspended in the abdominal cavity uh, by the mesentery uh, and part of the peritoneum that's in the midsection. It's the, so it extracts the energy from the food that we eat. And there are problems that can happen uh, some of you may have heard of leaky gut. Uh, so the uh, any fissures or uh, small openings in the intestinal wall uh, can happen due to inflammation and can set up an inflammatory uh, situation. And the autoimmune problems that are rooted here commonly cause what is called this leaky gut syndrome. And it's a condition that causes, uh, that occurs when we develop this intestinal uh, permeability. And this happens when the intestinal wall loses its integrity and becomes increasingly porous. And then uh, substances from the large intestine go into the bloodstream and set up an inflammatory response. And there are a lot of people who suffer from this, uh, these intestinal problems, this so-called leaky gut. And there's a myriad of causes, um, uh, but 80% um, of my patients who display these telltale symptoms um, we can turn it around with lifestyle and, uh, and diet. And we will talk about that too, but um, this can be an underlying problem in a variety of health problems. Um, we have to shore up the gut first. So like we were saying, the underlying factor as with all of diseases is getting down to the root cause and not just treating the symptoms. So. Um, uh, here are uh, the examples of uh, irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, acid reflux, candida or fungal overgrowth, eczema, joint pains, constipation. There are a number of uh, systemic problems that occur um, and are autoimmune problems that have their origin in the gut. So taking, uh, you know, uh, probiotics, prebiotics, those things that replace the friendly flora of your gut is important. If you've had antibiotics, then you really have to take uh, probiotics because it, antibiotics are indiscriminate as they kill everything, friendly and unfriendly bacteria alike, and can really destroy the friendly flora, the biome, uh, microbiome of your, your gut. And there's uh, other issues that come up um, called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO. And uh, this is excessive um, bad bacteria that can grow. Okay, we, we, we've hit the uh, 12 o'clock mark and uh, I haven't uh, finished our, our second um, uh, element yet. Uh, but is there any questions or, um, before we, uh, we close, I guess, uh, for an hour? Any there questions? Are, there are no questions currently listed in the chat. Okay. Uh, anyone who want to have a question they'd like to uh, to ask? So the fire element, the um, heart, small intestine, 
uh, pericardium. We didn't talk too much about the uh, uh, triple heater, uh, which is the thermostat of the body. We want to keep the upper, middle, and lower burners. There's their upper, middle, and lower chow. Um, the temperature, correct temperature, so those organs in those different burning spaces, as it's called, uh, function properly. So we've talked about the uh, heart, the supreme controller, and the small intestine, the official of sorting. We haven't gone to the uh, functions of pericardium or triple heater yet. All right, if there's uh, no questions, uh, Lama, should we break here? Lama Kathy uh, had to step away. Um, so yes, she said we break at noon and then we resume again at 1 p.m. Okay, if there's uh, no final questions, we'll break here. So have a, a good lunch and I'll see you back at one. Thank you, Lama. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>